Uh, in the last hour, Manchester United have issued a statement saying that Cristiano Ronaldo will not be part of the Manchester United squad for this Saturday's game against Chelsea. Uh, the rest of the squad is fully focused on preparing for that fixture. That came after it emerged this afternoon that Ronaldo had refused to come on in the game last night against Tottenham before he just stormed down the tunnel and went straight out of the stadium before the match had even finished. What are your thoughts on all this? I think it's outrageous, uh, Nathan. You know, I think he's... Uh, he, I mean, for a player to do that, I've never known a player do that before, ever. Uh, and I've seen... We've all seen a lot of players who are very disappointed about not being playing. Uh, but but this is the second incident that I've had this year. I think uh, the pre-season, they were playing a friendly match uh, and he was subbed, uh, came into the dressing room and uh, went home before the players came in. Uh but I think this is worse now. This is a, a worse incident, Nathan. You can't, uh, you can't have that and run a club properly. Mm. They've acted swiftly, so uh, the word is that he's training with the the kids. He's not going to be a part of the squad. Should that be it for Ronaldo? Should Eric Ten Hag say you're not playing for this club again? Simple as that. Regardless say, of how much yeah, money it costs. I think, yeah, I think he could have done it very early before the season started, Nathan. Because I think, uh, from what we can gather in the press, that uh, Ronaldo uh, was insisting on a transfer before the season started, and uh, the manager said no. Uh, but you know, if a player wants to get away, uh, you're not going to get the best out of him, and, and it's gone from bad to worse. The, the, the morale. I mean, if you're trying to get a morale in a dressing room, then if you if you, if you, if you think about it, what is morale? Mm. You know, morale is everybody want uh, pulling together playing for the same manager in a way that uh, is, 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 is suitable for the club. All those things, that's morale. I mean, you've got a dressing room, though, where Ronaldo's in there, he's not happy, then you don't get that, the morale that you're looking for. In fact, you know, the way they played the other night uh, against Spurs was very good. There was a spirit about the team. Uh, they won well, they played well, but mostly the spirit is, is, is there. But if you get uh, you know, a, a prominent player, a great player like like Ronaldo, not pulling with the rest of the lads. You don't get the morale and the team spirit that's needed. So I think the best thing they can do is is let him go, get him out of get him out of the dressing room altogether. Can any part of you see it from Ronaldo's side? Thirty seven years of age one of the greatest footballers of all time, five-time World Player of the Year. Success has followed wherever he has gone. And he's looking at this Manchester United group who ha- had been underperforming, feeling that you know he's maybe not just deserving of a place in the team, maybe he's still the best player at the club. And he's sitting on the bench on a huge night like last night. And he's just a bit fed up and he hasn't handled it particularly well. But really, has he done any major damage by doing that and not coming on for the last couple of minutes of a game? I th- yeah, I think I think that there's a lead up to what happened last night, uh, Nathan. That's been going on for a while, uh, and obviously he thinks he should be in the team. He's he's a great player, has been a great player for years, uh, but that doesn't give you the license to do what he did. You know, he's, 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 no matter how great the player is and what he's done in the past, it's it's the now that matters. And uh, you know, if you get a player who's on the bench. And goes into the dressing room or leaves the the the, the pitch before the, the the players come in, and that that's 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 no way for anybody to behave. It doesn't matter. It could, he has been one of the best players in the world, but that that doesn't give you an excuse to to behave in the manner that he's behaving. Mm. It does feel unprecedented for a player to uh, firstly refuse to come on, then walk down the tunnel, and then not just stop there, go to the dressing room, pick up your gear and head home before yeah. the match has even finished. In, in all your years uh, being involved in the game, have you, have you ever seen anything like it? No. No, definitely not. I mean, he it, it did it, it did it with, uh, the, the early part of the mm. season as well. Not, not quite what he did last night. But you, you, like, you can't have that as a manager. It, it doesn't matter what a player has done. It's what, he, what he's doing now for the club in terms of morale, uh, team spirit. Uh, like, well, all the players see this. And I know from my own experience, they, 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 you can't do it. You know, you can't get them around. You can't get a, a team spirit in the, in the manner in which is needed for any club. 
uh, if this type of thing is happening. And don't forget, again, I'd go back to start the season where he was insisting on a transfer. I, I, I think at that stage, they should have just let him go. Because you, you can't keep a player, especially a player of his stature, in a club who you know wants to get away. What, 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 what attitude is that for, in terms of the rest of the players, Nathan? That's, a, that's only one player. You're talking about 16, 17, 18 other players. And it ruins the whole lot if you're trying to get a team spirit going. Everybody has to be pulling together. Like this has been building, as you say. Something similar happened more low-key pre-season game, uh, right the way up to even at the weekend, throwing his arms up in the air when he's been taken off, you know, incredibly frustrated uh, that he's not getting to play the full 90 minutes. Is there, if he comes out over the coming days and, and apologises, like, is the right thing then for Eric Ten Hag to let him back in and even just keep him till January and there's an awful lot of games to be played, keep him fit, keep him involved in the European matches? Or is this the final straw? Is this just such an unacceptable breach of the club's ethos and what you expect from professional footballers that there can be no way back? No, there's no way back from it, Nathan. They don't get at the start of the season when the new manager came in. Uh, Ronaldo was looking for a transfer. It looked like he had some club uh, uh, fixed up. And uh, the, the manager said, no, you're not going. Uh, and, and then he, he's played up, I think, since then. In other words, he's, he wasn't one of the group. He wasn't one of the players that was going to pull together. He wanted to go from the start. I think the wisest thing to do for, for, for the, the club was for the manager to let him go. Mm. Say, OK, if he, you know, I mean, you can't have a player playing for you uh, Nathan, with the team spirit that's required if he's telling you he wants to go. Let him go. Because it, it doesn't work. It never worked. I've never seen it work out in football where somebody wants to go and, and they always do things to, to, to let the manager or make the manager let him go. The manager didn't do that, but he's, he's paying the price for it himself now. He picked a bad night as well to throw his toys out of the pram, considering the Manchester United performance and result in the 2-0 victory against Tottenham. Uh, I think without question, the best performance of Eric Ten Hag's time in charge at United. What was it about the performance last night that seemed to bring United to, a, to another level? I don't think it was a coincidence, Nathan, that they played in the spirit that we haven't seen them play when Ronaldo wasn't playing. Now they pulled together as a, as a team. That's the best I've seen them play this season. Mm. It was a really good performance against a good team. Well deserved to win. But you could see you could see the attitude of the players together. You know, the, 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 it's one thing about football. If things are not right, it manifests itself on the pitch, Nathan. If things are not right in the dressing room, it manifests itself on the pitch. Or else there would be no such thing as good team spirit and a bad team spirit. Those players went out last night. Nothing, nothing, nothing sure, in my opinion, that we're going to show Ronaldo this is what we can do without him. I don't think it was a coincidence. In terms of the individual performances, Casemiro had to wait a while and we were all wondering why he was waiting to get that opportunity in the middle of midfield considering Manchester United had spent so much money on him and uh, his brilliant reputation that he built up through the years at Real Madrid. How impressed were you with him last night and over recent games and how he's changing that Manchester United midfield? Well, well he's been a good player for a long time, Nathan, and, and he's obviously improved them. But I think that the, the spirit, like the, Fernandez, was really good last night. Mm. I haven't seen him play well all this season, like he, like the way you know, I'm seeing him moan at the referees and n- not behaving himself very well. But he was a real player last night, and then Fred was playing like the, the way when you see them playing the way they played, Nathan. It's not a coincidence, you know. There's something about them. You can see it in the team players getting back, chasing back, doing the things that they should be doing, and it looked a real team last night. You know, Ronaldo has been a great player. There's no doubt about that. But, but the, like the, the thing in football, what's gone is gone. You know, he's not a great player for Manchester United now. I mean, he's 36, 37 years of age, and and he's he's not in with the lads or with the manager, in my opinion. Again, I go back to the, the pre-season. He wants to go. He told the manager he wants to go. There must have been something lined up, and the manager said, "No, you're not going." Well, your heart can be can't be in the club. If, if you want to go. And the rest of the players in the dressing room and very, very quickly pick that up. In other words, we're not together. He's not one of us. Then you don't get the team spirit that's required. And I don't think it was a coincidence 
that they got together last night and played like a team uh, with, with Ronaldo not playing. And again, I, I, I repeat, Ronaldo has been one of the great players of all time. But the now is now, but the past is gone. So Manchester United have to concentrate now on what they have to do without him. What about the Tottenham performance at Old Trafford? They had a chance to go within a point of Arsenal at the top of the table and put in one of those performances that we've seen a lot under Antonio Conte over the last year, where it was just very flat, didn't create a huge amount of chances, seemed to get overrun in midfield. What's the missing piece of the jigsaw for for Conte to get Tottenham to the level that they can compete in the big games? Because that's something he pointed out afterwards, that in the big matches against the other leading teams, they seem to consistently struggle. I I don't think he has the players at the moment, Nathan. I think he's making a huge job, a big job, of the players he has at his disposal at the moment. I don't think they've got a real player in midfield, for example. They were well outdone in midfield. And if you're outdone in midfield, Nathan, you don't you don't win matches. And Manchester Manchester United were very good in midfield last night. Fred was good, Fernandez was good, uh, the lad you mentioned was good. Uh, you know, they, they they outplayed them in midfield, and o- overall they outplayed. I mean, uh, Kane never got into the game. Mm. So, on two of their best players never got into the game because they're waiting for a supply. They have to be supplied with the ball. They never got it because Manchester United didn't allow them to get it. But I think from Conte's point of view, I think Conte is, is performing really, really good you, you, as a great, great manager to do what, what Spurs are doing, to be quite honest, with the players that he has, Nathan. You don't think then there's a blind spot or anything? the United players, now you'd be talking. Mm. You know, with the, with the, with the, with the, the, the players that Manchester United have, the, the talent that they have, you know, to get them all together like he has done with the, with the Spurs players. And I think he's done a, a, a huge job with them. Hasn't spent much money. Uh, you know, a lot of limited players, in my opinion. But he has a team there. But last night, Manchester United were too good for him. They were really, really good, Manchester United, last night. Liverpool won, Manchester City nil. Uh, I think everyone going into this game was a bit concerned about what City might do to Liverpool, considering Liverpool's form, and that we mightn't get the quality of game that we've seen over the last four or five years from these two sides. Uh, we needn't be concerned. This was, quality-wise, it felt as good as we've got over the last couple of years. It was a real intensity to the game. What were Liverpool doing differently against City that they haven't been doing for the rest of the season? Um, I would say attitude, Nathan. You know, they were up for it. Mm. And it, like, if, if you look back, okay, look, if you see what they can do against Manchester City, what would you, what, what do you put down for the, the, some of the, the um, performances they put in against much lesser opposition? And I, my take is that they weren't up for it in a way. I mean, if you're playing Manchester City, I'd say Liverpool, like most teams would be, you, you, you're scared, and that gets you, that gets you up for the match, and that's what happened to Manchester. That's what happened to Liverpool, in my opinion. They were the Liverpool that we know and have been absolutely brilliant for the last few years. So you'd have to look at, at I'm sorry to say, at the other performances that they weren't up for it against the lesser teams. And you have to be up, up for it against every team, Nathan. That's what makes the champions. So the, the, Liverpool showed what they can do. They played really well, well-deserved to win the match. Uh, but th- that's what you have to do week in, week out, week in, week out which they have been doing for the last mm. few years. It's only this few, this few years from the start that they went up for it in a way that we know Liverpool can and should do. And it was a really, really good performance. So would that suggest to you that there's a possibility that it was a one-off, that this was Manchester City that brought the best out of them and maybe at times over the season they can get themselves up for big Champions League games or matches against the top six, but that a bit of the spark is gone and the relentlessness that they've shown over the last three or four years that they may not be able to get that back. Well, the performance against City the other day should, should tell them this is what we have to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm sure that the manager would be telling them that week in and week out, but the manager can only say so much. You can't do anything about it on the pitch. It's from the players themselves that get together now and say this is what we have to do. And it, it should be a... a, a a situation where they know if they do what they can do, they're up there again. So they, they, I think that's the way they learn from it. 
I don't think it'll go the other way where they'll go back to where they were, where they went up for the matches in the way that they should be up. I mean, that's your, that's your starting point, being up all the time. That's what great champions, mm. Nathan. You know, like if you're, if you're playing against the top team, you're scared, you go out, you're going to have to do it. You know you're going to have to do everything you can to beat this team. But what happens then sometimes, you play a team that you know is not as good as you are. And it, it's a hard thing. I've heard Graeme Souness talk about it when he played that you have to have the same attitude. You're going. To, I, I know from playing my time at, at, at Leeds, when you're playing against a team that's superior to you, or sorry, inferior to you in terms of attitude, the only way they can beat you is to try harder than you. So if you try harder than them, they've no chance of beating you. And that's what Liverpool have to get back into their game again. And that was a great that was a great show the other day. Now they have to. I know they have played since. And, and they won against uh, West Ham, so maybe they are back to where they. I didn't see the I didn't see the West Ham match, but you have to fit, treat West Ham and not Forest the same as you treat Manchester City. That's 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 well known for all the clubs that win trophies. Nathan is to be up for all the matches, especially the matches that the team is not considered to be as good as you. The only way they can win is having a better attitude. And that's the attitude you have to have. Week in, week out, week in, week out. That's what makes the great teams. And I think that that, that hasn't been the case with Liverpool this, this season so far. But maybe that match and the match against West Ham, which I, I haven't seen, would get them back to where we know they can be. What did you make of the behaviour of the two managers during the game? Uh, not good. No, it wasn't good for the game. Nathan, and I, I think what's happened now, I think that the two dugouts, as we call them, are far too near each other. You know, football is a very emotional game. You know, one ref, one one manager will see it was a penalty, the other manager wasn't. Say that's what that's what it's like on the touchline. That's what. So you you can't be near each other. You're too near each other. You can hear each other talking. If it makes makes loads of rows, it does all sorts of things. They've got to get away from each other. Uh, but but the, 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 some of the stuff that came out of the match wasn't good, that's for sure. And just to finish then on Manchester City, beaten for the first time in the league this season, mm. uh, as is his want and his way, Pep Guardiola tried a few things different. And Pep Guardiola, or, uh, Phil Foden was way out on the left-hand side. Kevin De Bruyne was playing in a, felt a bit more of an advanced role. Very different from, say, the team that took Manchester United apart in the derby. Uh, can you understand right, what, he was, I, I, what he was trying I, I, to do? No, I think they've they've been. I think they have been playing in those positions. You know, the, the Foden wide on the left. Uh, uh, De Bruyne hasn't been playing as a midfield player, Nathan. But what what what's happened? I think, in my opinion, Manchester. What what Pep wants to do, uh, in my opinion, is not perfect by any means. And when he played against a team like, uh, what I mean by that. If you look at the goal, Nathan, that Salah scored, that was a long kick out from the Liverpool goalkeeper. With one player back, one player back, who didn't do well, and Salah got through nearly from the halfway line to score. And and three or four minutes before that, he was also through to score. So I think it's the way, it's, it's, it's Pep with the players that he has. It's attack, attack, attack. I don't think there's much emphasis on defending at all. Now, I think most of the teams that he plays against can't, can't cope with what they do going forward. Liverpool were able to do so. And I think, I, from what it's worth from my point of view, I, I, I don't think it's a good way of playing football. I think when, when Salah was up the pitch, there should have been at least two defenders back marking Salah. Whereas all the, all the, they were looking for the goal, looking for the goal. And against most of the teams they play against, they're not good enough to take advantage of the lack of defending from City. Liverpool were. we got to leave it there, John, unfortunately. We're out of time. Great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next Thursday. OK, Nathan. Thanks.